With 5,000 confirmed cases in Australia right now, all of Australia is looking at the possibility of the exponential growth uh, that has occurred in other parts of the world. It's impossible to predict exactly how the situation will evolve, but for the moment there has been an interruption of business and personal life right around the country. It's expected around 90% of all businesses will be affected uh, by the crisis, but of course it is particular sectors that will be affected more than others. Those in tourism, travel, education, hospitality, retail uh, and the like. Many of these also SMEs, which are less capable of addressing a crisis that we are now facing. Australian companies face a wide range of different challenges, uh, including, of course, uh, weaker global demand, weaker domestic demand, disrupted supply chains, reduced consumer spending, uh, lower levels of investment, labour supply and so on. Beyond the direct impact of the economy, there are concerns in particular about the global market because Australia is, of course, a very uh, outwardly focused and export oriented economy. Australia's major economic relationships are with the European Union, both as a trading partner and, and critically as an investment partner with the United States, but also in particular China and the other countries of North and Southeast Asia. But however, there are good reasons to remain optimistic. And the two ones are these. The Australian economy and Australian business sector are in very solid shape, having enjoyed 28 years of a consecutive economic growth with strong terms of trade um, and deep integration into the Asia Pacific region. This includes, for example, a very strong banking sector with strong uh, capital reserves, financial services, and uh, ability to support the Australian economy. Secondly, is Australia has gone into this crisis in a strong fiscal position. The Australian government, the federal level, working together with the various state governments around the country, um, have announced a raft of very aggressive measures to support households and support companies uh, to keep jobs and to keep business flowing. The Australian Government's response to COVID has been very much uh, done in cooperation with business and with other key actors in the economy. The Australian Government has announced an unprecedented package of measures to support individuals, households and businesses alike, particularly those most affected, totalling so far 320 billion Australian dollars or around 16.5% of Australian GDP. These include 130 billion to support businesses to keep jobs, to keep people employed, with the government providing $1,500 per fortnight per employee for up to six months. Eligible companies for this include those with a turnover of 1 billion or less, uh, and where they can show that their turnover has fallen by more than 30%. Or it's eligible also for companies over 1 billion where their turnover has fallen by more than 50%. Other measures include initiatives to support cash flows for employers, with tax-free cash flow, cash flow boosts uh, targeting in particular on SMEs, and measures to support business investment and others. The Reserve Bank of Australia, the central bank, is also leading on COVID-19, with a rate cut down to 0.25%, an historic low in Australia, a bond buying program, and measures to support lending to Australian businesses in close collaboration with Australian, other Australian regulators and Australian corporate banks. French companies operate in almost every sector of the Australian economy, whether it be in defence, logistics, transport, uh, banking and finance, retail, and in so many other areas. French companies are here and have been for a very long time. They make a major contribution to the Australian uh, econo economy, uh, the export sector, but also the quality of life for people living in Australia. To those French companies who are facing, as they all will, uh, specific challenges and difficulties, do not hesitate to reach out to the Australian uh, government and other agencies which are there to support and advise through this difficult time. 
we have found the Australian government very responsive and also very targeted in the way that it is coordinating its support. Of course, this is now a time when everyone, if they hadn't already, have discovered or rediscovered video conferencing with so many, almost all companies operating with their people from remote locations and still being able to conduct their business on a day-to-day -day basis. Among all of the challenges that are being raised, we have also heard that this crisis is helping to bring out the best in people, with many individuals making the extra step and efforts to make sure that their own people are supported, that they're working for the good of the company and the economy, and of course, for their families as well. So with this in mind, we all have a role to play to keep confidence up, to keep trust and, cre and to be optimistic about getting through this current crisis. Since the beginning, we've seen many companies embracing technology like never before, uh, also embracing uh, innovation, collaboration, new forms of working together in the best possible way, which will also strongly position companies for the future beyond COVID-19. It's also important that we maintain our international networks. So whilst these are severely under strain at the moment, it's important not to lose contact with those global markets that are so central to the economy, but also at the individual company level for their ongoing success. So we very much welcome the joint efforts of EU and Australian leaders at the G20 level to facilitate um, trade uh, in essential goods in particular, vital medical supplies and equipment, agricultural products and food, and other things to flow across borders as they need to during this period. In the longer run, we strongly believe that stronger collaboration between the EU and Australia was always the way forward, with key sectors uh, in the economy, including medical research, innovation, and many, many others. And of course, a free trade agreement will be essential to creating the right economic framework that will deliver that intensified cooperation.